What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Steve Nasatoski here of Mason Brew, bringing you another episode of Freshman Feature, episode 15 here. Lewis Hansen, school stats, recruitment, projection, everything you guys need to know about the freshman class coming into this season of 2021 Michigan football. And I said Lewis Hansen. Special episode today. I interviewed Lewis Hansen, asked him a few questions. So a lot of these videos are me gathering information. A lot of these questions I was able to actually ask Hanson and, uh, and and get all the answers that we need here for this episode. So let's dive in to episode 15 here covering four-star tight end, Lewis Hanson. First high school, he's out of Neum, Massachusetts. He went to St. Sebastian High School. He was a team captain and a four-year varsity player. He played wide receiver, tight end, defensive end. Uh, his senior year was canceled due to COVID, but junior in 2019 had a 5-3 and three record at St. Sebastian. As a sophomore in 2018, the school had a 7-2 and two record. He's a guy who also played basketball, four-year starter in that sport as well, team captain as well there. So good leadership across multiple sports. For his stats, short, short stats here. Only eight games his junior year, 39 receptions, over 500 yards, and eight touchdowns. Moving right along here to his metrics, Six four and a half feet tall, 232 pounds. Couldn't find any metrics. He is someone who does bring a lot of versatility, uh, a lot of athleticism to the tight end position. So even though we don't have those testing numbers, would be interested to see that hopefully in the future here. Uh, he's got a lot of potential. So um, hopefully we'll be seeing that moving forward here. So in his rankings, rivals clearly the highest on him. Four star 84 nationally. So top 100 due to rivals. Um, so he's the number five tight end in their rankings overall. ESPN 24-7, both, both have him as a three-star mid to late uh, 20s as a positional ranking as a tight end. Uh, in my opinion, it seems like Rivals is based more on potential projection. They project him more as how he will grow into the position where ESPN and 24-7 are looking more at what is he currently, right? Still has some some growing to do into that position, some development and Rivals really likes the ceiling that he has where ESPN and 24-7 are more fo focused on what he is today. Uh, for his offers, high academic guy, right? You got Duke, Georgia Tech, Princeton, Syracuse. A lot of his offers uh, were high academic offers. That's where a lot of his interest did lie. He had some bigger schools offer as well at Georgia, Iowa, LSU, Ohio State, Penn State, Wisconsin, Notre Dame. Doesn't list an offer, but they were uh, lurking around there. So an offer potentially would have came through if Michigan didn't snap up his recruitment. Speaking of which, recruitment, he committed to Michigan in April of 2020. Let's bring in Lewis Hansen here. I asked him a few questions about his recruitment. First, I asked him how big a factor academics played in his recruitment overall, whether it was just another item on the list or truly uh, towards the top of his priority list. So let's listen to his answer here. Uh, it was definitely a priority for me. Um, yeah. I would say I was kind of looking for the best combination of academics and football. So there were a lot of really high academic schools with programs not to the standard Michigan has. and. There were a lot of good football programs that didn't couldn't compete with Michigan academically, so ultimately Michigan kind of had the best combination of both, so that's, that's why I chose Michigan. All right, after that, I asked how Michigan differentiated themselves, right? How did Michigan separate themselves from the other schools on his list? Yeah, I definitely had a great relationship with the whole staff, and they stayed in touch with me and my whole family daily for a long time, um, which definitely showed that I was a priority and put them high on my list. And... Uh, one of the big factors in my recruitment was that I only got to see probably six or seven schools my sophomore and junior year before everything shut down. Um, and they were definitely my favorite school I visited out of those, out of that bunch. So it kind of just a combination of a great connection with the staff and being able to see Kansas and knowing that I like everything I saw would made, made Michigan uh, the top of the list. And then finally, I asked about how COVID impacted his decision overall without visits. He had a couple of visits that he had potentially lined up that got canceled since visitations were not uh, possible in, in the COVID times. So I asked him kind of how did that delay or, or change his recruitment overall? Yeah, so I was obviously unable to visit some of the schools I wanted to visit. Uh, but at the same time, I knew through everything else, all my other priorities and picking a school that Michigan was kind of the spot for me um, so originally I wanted to see more schools but when I committed last April um, I wasn't going to take visits regardless of whether or not it opened back up I knew I was going to Michigan um, obviously I got back to Michigan a few times but um, 
once I committed, I was locked in in last April. So Sharon Moore was his primary recruiter. It's clear throughout that they had a very great relationship and that definitely played a huge factor in his recruitment overall. So moving on to his scouting, his versatility brings a ton with him, right? He has a skill set for a flex tight end, physical enough to be an inline tight end. Main thing is he has to grow into that, right? I'll get to that towards the end, but he performed really well at the 2019 Penn State camp. Solid size, strong hands. His hands are mentioned quite often and really good testing numbers, right? So he tracks the ball well, high points it as well. He started off as a wide receiver, like I said, obviously grew out of that position. So he brings a lot of wide receiver skills just in a larger tight end body. Uh, sets up routes well. Um, there's some improvements mentioned. Work on getting out of breaks with more explosion. Sink hips on blocking and adding upper body strength, right? So some aspects of tight end, especially blocking, he's willing as a block as a blocker just has to kind of grow into that body, le- use leverage appropriately, sync up those movements, uh, but he's got a lot of potential there. So I asked him what he focused on without his senior season, right? It was canceled due to COVID. How did he stay uh, in shape? What did he develop? What did he focus on? This was his answer. Yeah, so without the season, I was definitely able to be in the weight room more. Um, so definitely much bigger and stronger than before um, and probably it, than I would have been had we played a full season because normally you go into a season uh, in the best shape and then you kind of lose five, six pounds throughout the season. Um, but instead I went the other direction and put on some good muscle throughout the season. Um, so that was that was one of the positives. Um, and also we had a seven on seven season in the fall, so I was able to stay active with route running and hands and stay fresh that way. Um, yeah. So I think I got a decent combination of the two. And then I also asked if there were any areas of improvement that he was focused on and whether or not the coaches gave him that direction. He said that this was more just him going through his own film, looking at his own skill set, not really anything from the Michigan staff that he specifically had to work on. But uh, this is what he said when I asked him what uh, he was looking to improve. I definitely needed to obviously put on some muscle and some size and work on my blocking ability to be able to compete with the Big Ten schools. Um, If I want to play this coming fall, obviously I played my junior season, I think at 225. So um, I don't think there's any tight end in college football moving people at 225. So I had to put on some weight and work on the blocking technique to get ready for that aspect. All right, looking at his film here, uh, as always, 8.30 p.m. tonight, live stream here on Memorial Day. Happy Memorial Day, right? And it's a live stream to watch all things Lewis Hansen, his film, answer any questions you guys have. Again, 8.30 p.m. Eastern time tonight on Monday, Memorial Day. First comp. All right, I got Eric All, best comp I can come up with, okay? This is a guy all came in with a uh, 6'4 height, 225-pound uh, tight end out of Ohio. All right, he was ranked as a four-star around 350 overall, so kind of between that three-star, four-star line, kind of aligns with what we have with Lewis Hansen here. Versatility, versatility, versatility. Something that always came up with Eric Hall in his recruitment, and I mentioned it as a part of the skill set that Lewis Hansen brings to the Wolverines, uh, and it was the hands for Eric Hall that was mentioned all over the place. Okay, a high floor prospect overall that just had to build strength, grow into the position. You know, he, he was more of a flex, but had... Uh, the capability to grow into an inline guy as well. And, and again, that versatility allows you to plug him into a lot of different areas of the offense and take advantage of his skill set. So a lot of things there I think are very similar with Hanson. You could you could even say Jake Butt would be a fair comparison. Jake Butt was a guy, great frame for tight end, right? He was 6'5", I believe, out of high school, again, out of Ohio. Uh, solid receiving ability. Blocking was acceptable. Never like a, a true top end blocking tight end. Uh, but insane upside as a receiving tight end, right? That's what Jake Butt always brought to the Wolverines. And that's, again, something that I see with Lewis Hansen. So probably closer to Eric All, just because of the hands, uh, the versatility. That That's something that I think uh, Eric All has uh, with the flex tight end ability to go in line that you're going to see a similar path to Lewis Hansen. But Jake Butt could be a, a decent comparison as well, maybe towards the ceiling of that. So for his projection, right, um, I hate keep saying the word versatility, but it's something that should help him out, right? When you have that ability to be either a flex or an inline guy, you open up more opportunities for yourself early on in your career. So combine that with a favorable depth chart, right? Only a couple guys ahead of him with all Schoonmacher, um, Matthew Hibner. So that's really the only tight ends that you have to uh, get past. And um, I asked him, 
a couple questions around his projection, around his future. I asked him whether the staff sees him as an inline or flex, and, he, and this is the answer that uh, he provided. I've talked to them about it. I've talked to them about it during my recruitment and after. Um, and versatility is something that they liked in me and that they told me they wanted to utilize, um, which was another big part of my decision. Um, so being able to split out wide, in line, off the ball as like an H-back or even maybe in the slot or something um, was definitely, definitely a contributing factor to my decision. And then finally, he was given the playbook by Sharon Moore uh, the, in January 2021. He was starting to go through that. Uh, I asked him, what was that process like? What was he doing? How was he handling that? And this was his response to that. Just trying to get down the basics before I get to campus. Um, formations and motions and all that stuff. The boards, tempo. Um, so that way when I'm there, I, I kind of know what I'm doing. And then once we get into the installation process during camp i'll be able to just pick up right from there and kind of get into the actual plays themselves because um it would be pretty tough to start learning plays from a computer you have to be on the field to see that kind of stuff so i'd say just getting the basic down was my big goal going into the season so i think he can contribute early right given he was able to focus on weight gain and strength for his senior year should be able to get to playing weight relatively quickly all right because he was able to focused a lot more on strength building on that aspect of his game. He's going to come in a lot closer to playing weight than he maybe traditionally would if he had a full senior season. It just depends how quickly he can ramp up with the playbook, right? It's a big playbook, a lot to gather as a part of that process. So he is a smart guy, add that in with a favorable depth chart, and I expect him to com to be competing for playing time uh, in 2022. I think this year might just be a little too early, and you have guys more established, been in the system for a couple of years, uh, I think that's a bit too much of an advantage to make up. But with his skill set, I think as a redshirt freshman, he can start to get spot snaps and then really, really uh, get up to speed as he's more comfortable with the playbook. So shout out to Lewis Hansen for the interview to supplement this video. Really a great help and uh, a lot of great insight there. So appreciate you, Lewis Hansen, for uh, allowing me to interview that and include that as part of this video. For you guys watching, let me know in the comments. What do you guys think of Lewis Hansen, his skill set? Uh, again, I have polls every week. I didn't this past week. It's Memorial Day. But uh, for who you guys want to see next on the future episodes. So for next week's episodes, I'll have that poll on the community tab here on YouTube, on Twitter as well, at Stephen Toski. Again, live stream tonight. We'll go through all things film, any questions you guys have. And then finally, like and subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps grow the channel. Beyond that, thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch this video, stay safe out there, and as always, go blue.